Yeah. Jason? Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Um, so this is a little bit different format than we've had in the past and just trying to give uh, a little bit more time and depth to some of the things that we've been working on and allow all of you to ask any questions or engage in any discussions that discussion we might have without uh, being rushed on to the next topic, so to speak, with all the different things you, you need to cover. Um, so this it kind of serves as an annual report in some ways. Uh, we kind of do get into a little bit of what we're doing now and what we plan to transition into this year. And uh, we've had a lot of different uh, moving parts, even within our own structure of our organization. And uh, just, you know, real quick, um, so we have a, a 25 member board. We, we actually can have up to 27 me members in our board, which I know for a lot of organization, that sounds like a lot. Even to me, it sounds like a lot to have on our board. But when you start factoring in all the different growth stakeholders in our communities, we probably don't even have all of those uh, groups represented fully. So we try to try to be uh, uh, have as many of our stakeholders on the board as we can, and everybody in our board is an investor. Um, and then on top of that, um, we have, uh, I think, most of our members of our team here tonight. And I'm going a little bit out of order of my slides here, so this might be a little bit um, clunky as we go along. But I think it's important to make some introductions. And so I think everyone probably knows um, Art Rashton from our team. Uh, I was going to say your title, but uh, Director of Strategic Initiatives. And then uh, Audra Hoy, uh, is Director of Business and Economic Development. Uh, Audra is transitioning. Uh, she's moving to Madison uh, soon, so her last day is next uh, Friday physically in the office, but she's going to stay on and uh, contractually work with us um, on, our, on managing our RLF and Capital Catalyst programs for a period of time until she fully transitions. Um, also joining us tonight, who's not fully with us yet, uh, starts on Monday is uh, Trisha Rathermel, and uh, Trisha uh, will be our director of economic development. And uh, just uh, uh, real briefly about uh, Trisha, uh, she was at the State of the City last night, but her last three employers uh, were EAA, uh, Kohler, and uh, Heidelhaus, right, in Green Lake. So, uh, and, and she, you were the director of uh, trade show marketing, marketing and. and trade. Yep. So a lot of re really good, uh, really good background there, and very excited to um, have talent and uh, replace talent with talent. So, um, and then behind me and out of my sight line, I almost forgot uh, Andrea uh, Fietzer, who joined us uh, last uh, September. And Andrea has been uh, doing our property searches from when we have RFIs, uh, and also our marketing and. Uh, a lot of other things too, but was also our conduit for the uh, industrial development committee. So, just a little bit there about our team. So happy that they're joining here tonight. Um, we'll kind of go on to the next slide here. Um, I just always like to highlight these stats, just because I think it's always good in a, in a public meeting to bring them out. Um, one of the things I appreciate last night from the state of the city was a real highlight in all the investments that our community is making in a lot of different ways in a lot of different areas um, whether it be infrastructure or beautification or gateways or um, softball fields or whatever and I think you know I always like to say you know we're, we're top 10 um, by a lot of verified third-party sources here um, and so I think it's always good to point that out you know, from college town to small cities to millennials to, to working uh, parents. So uh, whether you're a millennial or, or, a, or a family, obviously this is a good place to live. So where are we at today with our strategic plan? Um, we're in our second strategic plan. Um, this is actually the first plan that we've implemented with full-time staff. Uh, the first plan was put in place when it was really put in place by a volunteer board. Uh, in a consultant at the time our board our organization was being established uh, we're two-thirds of the way through our current plan but um, as is prudent uh, we are currently working on our next strategic plan so that after this year is over we're ready to hit the ground running with uh, the next one so yours is biennial also three years, years. yeah so we're two-thirds of the, of the way through our three-year plan oh. so we got 2019 to go yet. 
Uh, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but just a, a quick recap in terms of our four key initiatives. Um, number one um, has been, always been number one, and that's business retention and expansion. Uh, just, again, recognizing that the bread and butter of our community is the companies that we have. Um, in some communities where I've been, where we didn't have a lot of businesses, um, this was flip-flopped, and we spent a lot of time trying to recruit businesses. Here we have a very deep roster of companies, and so we feel a responsibility to uh, take care of the companies that we have. Um, early in my career, somebody said that community, communities are known by the companies that they keep, and I think that's definitely true uh, with Oshkosh. Uh, number two is uh, workforce development and uh, workforce development. We've we've have a very growing list of uh, initiatives that we're involved with to try to help retain and attract talent uh, in our community, or in many cases, knock down employment barriers so that people can work. And I'll kind of get into that a little bit as we go along too, with some of the things that we've been working on. Number three is entrepreneurship, uh, entrepreneurial growth, and this plays a lot into our. Uh, business finance programs <coughs> with both the capital catalyst programs and the revolving loan fund and then finally targeted industry development and this plays into I would say if there's a catch-all initiative in our strategic plan this probably would be it it relates a lot to the initiatives that we take on within our foundations work with downtown redevelopment and workforce development in some ways um, but also uh, blight elimination uh, the things that we're doing with um, the airport and I'll kind of get into a little bit with that um, and uh, and really just you know revitalizing uh, some of the more distressed pockets in, in the greater Oshkosh area. Uh, not going to spend a lot of time but there's a few things that we track um, I think are very key and, and really make our region stand out is you know last year I reported that from 2013 to 2017 we were the number one fastest growing Metro in the state of Wisconsin for export growth. Uh, we did slip a little bit in the last year. I think a lot of that probably had to do with some of the turbulence that related to tariffs, but uh, nonetheless, we are still ranked fourth uh, among the 12 metros in terms of export sales. A lot of that certainly relates to Oshkosh Defense, but not all of it does. And we have a lot of companies that do business around the world. Uh, labor force participation rate. Um, I naively have been um, stating that the real key, and, and with, uh, with the lack of population growth that we've experienced compared to some other metros, is to raise our labor force participation rate. And you can see that we rank seventh in the uh, state among our metros for that statistic. And then I talked to workforce development, and they told me how difficult it is to increase the statistic because uh, what's really built in here is that the people who want to work are pretty much factored into this uh, percentage and that there's a very small percentage of people who um, are employable and able to work uh, that can be used to increase that percentage so uh, so that's a very tough statistic but you can see over time that we've had a little decrease uh, in that percentage in terms of our economic strength um, we dipped a little bit in terms of the uh, 383 metro areas across the country went from 83 to 187 but uh, still rank very solidly within the top third of all metros across the country in terms of economic strength and fifth in the state of Wisconsin um, I think all of the ones ranked above us have a larger population base what makes up that number Jason that economic strength um, I think there's a lot of factors that play into it. Um, I think a lot of it has to do with like GDP, um, labor force participation, unemployment, um, wages, wage growth. Um, so there's a lot of different factors that play into that. And so, um, so those are just a few things that come to mind. I didn't, I don't have all of those in front of me, but I know those are a few things that, uh, that are looked at when co completing that analysis. Greater Oshkosh business growth, um, just highlighting, some of these were highlighted last night at our table uh, at the State of the City, and many of them will also be highlighted next week at the In Development event. Uh, but just some of the larger projects um, 
that translated to growth over the past year. Many of these are familiar to you. I um, also created or included a couple from the outlying communities as well uh, throughout our region. Uh, I know in Winnie County, for example, they did not have a pharmacy, so uh, we worked with them a little bit to attract a hometown uh, pharmacy. But by and large, you can see a lot of the uh, uh, projects here in our industrial parks, um, all row steel, um, 10 Nauting obviously went from one part of our community to the, to the other, to the south side. Uh, and you're familiar, obviously, with uh, projects such as Aviation Plaza um, and um, Oshkosh Corporation, the Oshkosh Food Co-op. Uh, some of the, the more uh, recent uh, projects here, just to highlight real quick, is, you know, um, you know, after Oshkosh Corporation, we would get the question, you know, what are, what's the next big project to come along? And, you know, there aren't too many Oshkosh Corporation projects that happen, but I would say that we've had a, a number of real strong, small to mid-sized to large projects over the past year. Um, certainly Aviation Plaza was a, was a significant win, not just for um, revitalizing an area that was underutilized, but certainly a major gateway corridor in our community. Um, it also really illustrates some of the behind the scenes stuff that happened. I know we had been working with uh, Extreme Customs um, on helping them find a new location for quite some time. And I know Audra had made an introduction um, between uh, the owner of Extreme Customs and, and, and Mr. Masters, uh, which was a very important component of that project. And so very, very happy with the direction that that's coming along. Another one that's up there is uh, M-Toxins, which as you all know, is a uh, snake and scorpion uh, venom lab uh, that produces antidotes for, um, I would say, obscure diseases around the world. And so I'm um, very happy that uh, that they are now uh, soon to be open um, and with an open house in, uh, to occur in May sometime, a uh, date yet to be determined. Uh, we did do uh, some business financing for them. Uh, going to the previous slide here real quick again, I just want to highlight Trio Academy. Uh, they are located on the, south, or the west side of town off of Highway 44, and they are um, a center for... Um, autistic children to help them with uh, some learning challenges that they face and we help them get uh, a grant from the women's fund and also help them through some uh, barriers through the county because they were in a flight path so we had to help them overcome uh, some uh, regulatory challenges there which they ultimately did prevail and then going on to the next one real quick um, Obviously, a number of different uh, familiar projects uh, on this slide. Um, I think one of them that's not on here, again, the Oshkosh Food Co-op that was highlighted last night. And uh, I just wanted to mention that just because Audra had uh, chaired the uh, site selection committee for the Oshkosh Food Co-op and, and really want to um, boost them as well because obviously they're in the home stretch of their campaign here in the month of March. Okay, I need to take a moment to figure out Just where I'm at on my slides. The M-toxins, they could really put us on the map if uh, you had some kind of bee venom coronavirus mm -hmm. vaccine. That's an excellent point. Yeah, I think there's, what they do, I think there's only nine of them uh, around the world. So um, but one of the things ex that's exciting about that too is they have been utilizing the talents of um, UW-Stevens Point students. And uh, they're starting to form a relationship with UW Oshkosh and some of the biochemistry students over there. So um, again, one of the uh, effects of a project like that and it's unique to, to the community. Okay. So um, workforce, workforce project. So this is an area where we've invested a lot of time um, an increasing amount of time over the last couple of years. And some of these initiatives were leading, some of them were supporting, and some were at the table. Um, I do want to highlight um, Wave Robotics because that's fresh in my mind because not only am I on the board of Wave Robotics, but um, this morning um, I was uh, fortunate enough to join an event at Oshkosh North with the Oshkosh Area Community Foundation. 
and some others, the school district, of course, to highlight a new uh, innovation and technology center uh, that they would like to create, basically a STEM lab and eventual maker space. Uh, first for the students of the Oshkosh Area School District, but also for the Wave Robotics focused uh, kids as well, um, as they compete in competitions uh, throughout the world. Uh, and also uh, to bring in some industry partnerships. So I think this morning we had, I don't know, a dozen or more companies that were there to kind of tour the space and the eventual space for uh, the Technology and Innovation Center. Um, really excited about that. I know even this morning I was communicating with uh, an engineer at Oshkosh Corp who is, um, has a side business of uh, manufacturing goods out of his home. Um, he's taking a little bit of grief from the city on that right now, but, um, but nonetheless, um, he, uh, and I don't bring that up to, to say that, but I bring, the reason I bring that up is because, uh, you know, I think there's a lot of people in our community that have those kind of talents and they, they operate either out of a home-based shop or, you know, even outside the city if they have their, have their own location. But I'd like to get some of those folks into the center, uh, kind of in some collaborative space. Uh, not just to interact with the kids, because certainly a lot of these folks could be mentors, especially if they come from uh, business and industry, but but also with each other, you know, who, what some of those outcomes can be. So so really excited about that. I, as I said this morning, I think that's the kind of thing that communities that are on the move do, you know, projects such as that. So uh, glad to have some of the, the leaders involved uh, with that project moving that forward. Uh, Mission Wisconsin. Uh, that is an effort through the state of Wisconsin to attract uh, veterans and soon to be ex uh, military men and women, uh, service men and women uh, to Wisconsin. And I uh, had a chance to speak on one of their panels here a couple weeks ago uh, in Green Bay. But basically, um, on a continuing basis, we receive resumes from people that want to move to Wisconsin. So. I think I've got four of them today, for example. So every week when we send out our weekly update, uh, we send that out to the businesses uh, that are on our newsletter list and others as well. So uh, really think that that could be another uh, tool for us, to, especially the kind of business space we have to attract um, military families uh, to our community. Um, we've met with different folks. I mean, Oshkosh Corp obviously is an obvious one, but Basler Turbo, I think they... They have 75 employees, and seven of their employees are um, former servicemen and women. So, um, so it really takes kind of the right fit for a lot of folks, and uh, we think Oshkosh can be a good fit. So those are the couple of things I wanted to highlight um, on that list. Um, Could you just go back um, yeah. a minute, Jason? Uh, can sure. you talk a little bit about the connection with the Justice Support Services? Yes, and I might turn to Audra on that, invite Audra to come up, because I know Audra's attended a couple of meetings with that group. Um, but my understanding is, uh, for those of sorry, I probably should speak into the mic. Um, for those uh, individuals who have had some trouble with the law, um, trying to engage them into a, uh, a workforce opportunity more quickly, as opposed to just recognizing that you know they had some troubles and writing them off as um, having value in the workforce so and our involvement in this is very very early it's seeing where we can potentially be a match to get them with the right employer having that right employer conversation but a lot of the statistics will show that once someone has been incarcerated even if it's something minor the risk of them being incarcerated again continues, the percentage continues to go up and up and up. So if it's someone that has a very minor offense, how can we cut them off at the pass, so to speak, get them the support they need, potentially the employment they need, and divert them away from the path of actually spending a night, two nights, two weeks, three weeks in jail, and then taking that burden off of the taxpayer as well as getting them on a better path down the road. So what our role looks like right now is very to be determined. Um, we're kind of at the table to see where we can be the best fit. Is it, is it getting them in conversations with the right employers? Is it finding them the right resources? Where do we plug in? And that's where a lot of the things we get involved in is, is 
let's just sit at the table and see where we can be the most effective. And sometimes it's as simple as an introduction and sometimes it's as big as catch your eye and potentially holding the grit within our, within our umbrella. But, um, so that's kind of the same. Yeah, I've been working with the district attorney's office on that and there's a lot of stakeholders at the table, but again, it's one of the things that we wanted to highlight as part of the overall workforce development plan. So for, it for could a community. be at the front end on diversion or mm -hmm. on the other end on re-entry after sure. incarceration. Yeah, in all, in all of in all of the above. Sure. Thank you. Um, the Winnebago Catch Your Eye program. Um, I think all of you are familiar with this. I think the the one thing that we've probably wanted to highlight on this, it's probably most recent, is an award we received through the Basic Needs Giving Partnership through the Oshkosh Area Community Foundation. Uh, a three-year commitment to allowing us to hire somebody to uh, coordinate that program and so now with Trisha on board that's my next task is to fill that gap uh, but um, basically with running with volunteers well I shouldn't say volunteers with no one dedicated to managing that program um, Julie has done a great job as a student at UW Oshkosh but she's gonna graduate soon and also our partnerships with uh, Lutheran Services and, and East Central but even with that with everybody pulled in different directions we've been able to do over 2,000 rides for employment related rides uh, for people who either need to get to work or get home from work at the end of the day um, their work day and so we think that there's a lot of there's a high ceiling for this program um, the capacity needs to continue to be there however um, we are really taxing a, a couple of volunteer drivers on this program. So that's where, and we initially went to the community foundation, our ride numbers weren't very impressive. And they said, well, the, your numbers aren't that impressive. And they said, well, we could do a lot more if we had more drivers. And so I think they, they understood that, they supported it. Um, we've had some other relationships that have come on board along the way, uh, Star Patrol, they're providing rides when we don't have a volunteer driver. Uh, the cab companies locally are doing the same thing and we are also utilizing a grant that we got from workforce development to pay dr drivers uh, a mileage reimbursement rate a federal mileage reimbursement rate so uh, that's another extra carrot to uh, attracting a driver for this program housing I um I don't have a lot, to be honest, I don't have a ton to add to this. I know we had a conversation last night is, you know, what, what's the conversation going to be on housing? I wanted to keep it here because I think it's an important uh, thing to acknowledge because even though while our economy has grown, um, our population base has not grown as fast as our economy has. And then we've had these conversations at, from a strategic planning level, which is how do we stimulate single family home building. We've had meetings with the Winnebago Gaming Home Builders Association. We've had conversations with their, with them about, you know, what do they see in our market versus other markets. Um, obviously, they'd like to see us be more aggressive on the front end in terms of what they pay for, what the city pays for. Um, but most of the, the projects that have come in have really been multifamily in nature. So we've had conversations at the board level is, do we ride the wave of multifamily? Um, or do we get, you know, do, do, we, do we somehow um, do more to try to stimulate more single family in this community for people of all incomes, for all different, you know, types of housing? And I think that's still a question mark yet. I mean, obviously, as an organization, we're sp spread in a lot of different directions. But I think that's a real question there for our community is, you know, do we ride the wave, what the market is demanding right now? or do we change our policies to attract um, more single family? You know, where do we go with this conversation? And I think that, I'll be candid, we don't have all the answers as a development corporation. Um, we know some of our towns um, do have developments. Uh, we have some obviously in different pockets of our, of our community. But, you know, I think this is more of a discussion point more than just anything is just, you know, where do we go from here as a community with respect to our strategy for uh, attracting housing of all types? Um, and, I, and I know that um, our developers have, 
um, opinions on that. We've had we've had some folks that actually buy property in the last couple months in anticipation of developing it for housing, for multifamily housing, not for single family housing. So um, really kind of curious as to, to different thoughts on that, but uh, I thought it was worthwhile because this is a workforce development issue uh, in our community at this point in time. And I don't want us to forget about that, so to speak. So um, entrepreneurial programs. So we have a lot of different affiliations that we've worked with over time. Um, Wisconsin Supplier Network uh, and Shirley Molsky, who was previously at the UWO Small Business Development Center. Uh, we have some financially supported G Beta in the past. Uh, we've worked with uh, the Venture Center um, and also have a strong alliance with the AltaCent Resources Center for Entrepreneurship and Innovation, which uh, we have a board seat uh, at this point in time. Audra has worked a lot with uh, Fit Oshkosh in their co-working uh, center and uh, ha has established a good partnership there as well. Um, our BRE program. So with Tricia coming on board, Can I yes. Just bounce you back. Yes. Um, Please. So these are relationships. They are. Do, do we have any kind of numbers as to entrepreneurial like um, success stories or launches? Yeah, I think, and I'll, I'll get to that here in, in a second. Um, okay. This is one of those that if I had to do it over again, I would have put it later, put later in the presentation. But um, I would say uh, many of the uh, entrepreneurs that have graduated, for example, from the Center of Entrepreneurship and Innovation have ended up being capital catalyst um, applicants and awardees as part of our um, programs that we offer. And so, yes, uh, we do have a number of different successes that have been outcomes, been outcomes of that program. And I'll get into that here in a second. Before I do that, I just want to acknowledge um, a key priority for our board, as uh, indicated on the next slide, um, our BRNE program. And there was a ton of discussion at our board level of what can we do to continue to boost BRNE. We meet with well over 200 business executives every year, uh, and we've purchased the software, and we've got it rolling with Synchronous and turning, doing in-depth BRNE visits. Uh, the challenge has been for us is just the different directions that we're continuing to be pulled is staying true and disciplined to our BRNE Synchronous effort. Uh, we have an opportunity now, in fact, uh, uh, Tricia and joining our, our strategic planning meeting last week with our team, uh, we indicated that she will be foremost responsible for picking this up and running with it uh, when she starts next week. And so we have a lot of different ideas for really uh, boosting this uh, in, the, in 2020 and 2021. Our left and capital catalyst, I talked about this a little bit. Um, uh, or, or introduce the idea I was going to talk about this and you can see um, this as of our end of year event and again this is a 2019 wrap-up is that we had $815,000 of total awards that were made for RLF and Capital Catalyst uh, since that time uh, we have done $500,000 from Capital Catalyst total um, and have now um, made fully awarded our first capital catalyst um, fund, which was uh, capital catalyst one, and now we have done capital catalyst two. So um, we will be looking most likely to replenish that uh, with WEDC support. Uh, we'll have to wait a few months, however, but that seems to be real what the real demand is f because that is a startup fund, and uh, some of the some of the um, higher growth companies in our community that are starting have tapped the Capital Catalyst Fund, and I'll get into that here in a second. Uh, in a second is right here. Um, RLF and Capital Catalyst. So you can see in 2019, there were $345,000 awarded in loans, uh, $30,000 awarded in grants, as we were required to do through the WDC's support through the Capital Catalyst Program. 
Uh, and you can see the, the different companies that were supported uh, from New Hydraulics to Silver Creek Specialty Meats, which is on the south side of Oshkosh, uh, Thunderbird Bakery, RG Manufacturing, Ardent Fitness, and uh, M Toxin Venom Lab. Um, I might ask Audrey to come up here in a second if there's more questions about this, because I know that she's also done some awards in the last few weeks um, for other companies that have applied. Just to clarify, the WDC actually funded the grants. No city funds were used for grants. That's all. Nope. City funds are used for loans. Yep, yep. And that's why I mentioned we were required to do that. A part of the WDC uh, award had to be in the form of grants to companies. So... I also want to mention too, and this is also important, is of all the awards that have been made to the Capital Catalyst and RLF funds, all of them are current. We've never had a, de a delinquency on any of the awards that we have made in the past five years. So I think that's also an important note that the committee takes their charge very seriously. Um, I won't get into this too much. Um, this was included in your packet. So in the interest of time, I'll just acknowledge again the RLF recipients uh, this past year. And then in the next slide, uh, okay. the Before you go on, though, can Capital I ask Catalyst you a quick recipients. On that art sure. and fitness, I'm just noticing that that um, <clears throat> revolving loan fund uh, for relocation to the Central City was for a nonprofit. So there is assistance for nonprofits, not just for profit. It was the for-profit entity. Oh, okay. So, this um, is nonprofit. Okay. Yeah. So um, they have a nonprofit arm, but it was awarded to the for-profit entity that is CrossFit Oshkosh. Okay. Yeah. So they have a nonprofit arm. They're getting started. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You want to talk a little bit, Audrey, about some of the other awards that we've done in the last few weeks? Sure, yeah. So um, the beginning of 2020, we wrapped up Capital Callus Round 2. So we have now infused half a million dollars into startups in the greater Oshkosh area since July 2016. Um, and uh, about $100,000 of that is in grants and $400,000 of that is in loans. Um, the most recent ones we awarded uh, were a couple of additional infusions in cash into previous recipients. We have one awardee um, that has been picked up by a national grocery chain, but as to be expected, the, they need a little bit more capital to bring in the materials they need to ramp up to the requirements of that national food chain. Um, so that's something we should be very, very proud of. So that was an additional infusion in cash to help them get the capital they need for the supplies they need. Um, also, the final two that we awarded were both college students, um, both IT app companies. Um, one is um, an app focused on the how, best way to describe it, um, on the alcohol distribution industry. Um, so helping them find a way to um, offset workforce needs while also providing people the alcohol they desire at events. So it's a really interesting software development, which I don't want to say too much because they're still in the inner workings. Um, but then also a political app uh, to help people be more informed of decisions at the federal level. So two really great ideas coming out of um, our local university. One was a grant, one was a loan, and a grant to help them get a little bit more cash on the development side. And then moving forward, uh, property searches. So we keep track of the property searches. Many of these come from New North or, yeah, thank you. Uh, I might rely on you again here pretty quick. Um, property searches, um, many of these come from our uh, RFIs we received from New North and, and Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation. Some of them come from, are directly received. Um, and then uh, last year, Kimberly, I would say, was, was doing many of these and then uh, transitioned over to Andrea. And when Andrea receives these, she sends them out to about 150 real estate brokers and also the municipalities in the greater Oshkosh region to try to find the right fit to the uh, uh, prospect that's looking for a location. Um, target industry development. Uh, a couple things I want to highlight here is uh, we really worked uh, closely with uh, Whitman Airport over the last couple of years on some of the momentum I think that's being generated there. 
Uh, the new airport manager has done a good job of coming in and um, educating and engaging the, the county board uh, on a vision for the airport, um, a vision that I think is was sorely needed at Whitman Airport. And uh, so they're in the midst of a, a master plan for the airport. Um, but beyond that, a couple of wins there are there's going to be a new airport terminal that's more modernized to meet the current uh, business model for the airport because it, currently it's uh, set up for uh, commercial airline service and or at least designed for that purpose. And um, obviously that's not what we have here in Oshkosh uh, at this point. We have a very busy airport, uh, but it doesn't serve that purpose. So. Um, so we're going to have a, a new airport terminal, and that's that'll be a good another good gateway uh, front entrance for the Oshkosh community in Winnebago County, um, and also they have uh, started the process for installing uh, the beginnings of a taxiway for the Aviation Business Park, which obviously many of you are uh, know was years in the waiting uh, for that to occur. So a lot of momentum that's been generated there. I also had lunch last week with the new uh, deputy director of the airport. So to my knowledge, they haven't ever had a deputy director there, or at least not for some time. So um, that individual is gonna engage in a lot of business development and marketing um, in a way that hadn't previously been happening at the airport as well. So uh, very happy that those uh, projects are moving forward. I know coincidentally, I know next week with uh, the in development event and. Mark's going to give the, the keynote for our community for that, but um, really want to highlight the gateways to Oshkosh because, you know, we've talked about, not to, to steal a, a line from a movie, but, you know, planes, trains, and trucks really is what, you know, Oshkosh is about in a lot of ways. So, um, and I think that uh, we want to highlight, you know, the gateways that go in and out of Oshkosh from, you know, um, the interstate, um, our major corridors, um, come, people that fly in and out of our community, um, obviously, you know, by water and, uh, and just a lot of different ways that people can come in, our, in and out of our community. And then uh, finally, uh, a couple things real quick. Um, we had some workshops last year. Uh, opportunity zones uh, are, have been important, especially to our downtown, been attracting a lot of developer interest and uh, we'll continue to keep that on the radar as well. Uh, I mentioned our team. Uh, really glad Tricia could come today so that she wasn't just a black box and uh, you got to see her in person. And you see, see a lot more of her going forward. And then our board of directors, uh, some of the names on our board, all the, all the names on our board, and uh, some of the things coming up for us. Um, we want to adopt our new strategic plan ramp up our business retention and expansion program, um, and maintain the success in administering our business finance programs. So um, with that, I'm, before I, I go on, I think many of you have seen our video, so I'm not gonna play the video unless you wanna see it, but I do wanna leave time for questions because I think technically this wraps up here shortly. So I just wanna leave it at that and uh, open it up back to you. No? What would be the time for Capital Catalyst 3? I spoke with WDC today. All the funding has been awarded for fiscal 1920. So we will have to apply after July 1 for fiscal 2021. So get everything ready, submit it in June, and then it'll be a couple month evaluation process. So per the last couple of awards, probably up and running end of summer 2020 dollar amounts from each funding source you would expect? I, I told them today we'd probably do the same we've done the last two, which is a $125,000 request from WDC, which we would match if the city is so willing with 125000 from the revolving loan fund. We've had good success with that 250000 number, so in getting that distributed to the right people. I'd say it's been an excellent leverage of our revolving loan fund. And, and my right. hope would be after this third round that it's pretty evergreen and we don't have to ask for another award from the state that the repayments will start to feed and just feed the fund and it can just be a nice evergreen entrepreneurial fund living and breathing on its own. 
If I could just ask, I, I know there was reference on one of the slides about uh, diversity and inclusion. You know, what are some of the some of the um, goals and progress in that area? You know, and I've, as you know, I, I've been involved with Fit Oshkosh and seeing what we can, how we can make headway as a community. Um, and I think, unfortunately, we all know that that's going to be a longer path than any of us would like. Um, and it's going to take everybody coming to the table because sitting down with Tracy and Fit Oshkosh and all the people <coughs> who are passionate and engaged about it, it's a matter of making sure it turns in to the right people at the right table to make the right action happen. Um, because all of us sitting around ideating about what we want to be, we've got a great core of people, but then it's pulling in the people who can start actually making the rubber meet the road and make, affect some change in our community and what that looks like. Um, Would you say we're, we're poised to or to either plan for an entrepreneurial ecosystem that would serve as a foundation for for that community yeah and it, since I'm phasing into a more contract role I'll be a little bit more open I mean my long my my hopes and dreams are that at some point as capital catalyst becomes evergreen we can siphon off some of those funds to be create a minority focused entrepreneurial fund and so kind of a seed startup. Kind of like a seed startup fund, and whether that's micro grants, forgivable loans, just a little something to help um, help them get off the ground. Because a thousand dollars towards a laptop or a thousand dollars towards an oven goes a long way in getting a business started. Um, I think it, yes, we are poised for it. It's just a matter of ex actually executing. Yeah. Thank you. Well, I know I get to uh, talk to you guys a couple times, especially with you guys visiting Long Range Finance and giving us an update too. But, um, you know, Jason talked about it, uh, half a million dollars in capital catalyst funds and, um, you know, they've all been current. Now, we know that that will not always be the case. Right. Um, expect that, that at some point, but just mm -hmm. that that board and yourselves are making good decisions. You're being good stewards of our dollars as well as the state dollars too. Um, so I just, I, I want to thank you guys for being good stewards of, of those funds, taking that seriously, taking that approach that, um, you know, you're not just answering to them, you're answering to us too, and that you appreciate that part of it. And we get that. So we just, I just want to say thank you for your, your stewardship of that. And um, you guys are doing fantastic. I mean, half a million dollars, in st and those are, those are gap loans, or those are gap grants. Those are to get them over the finish mm -hmm. line. So that's, I'm not even gonna put a wager a guess on it, but those are businesses that are worth tens of millions of dollars, um, you know, millions and millions of dollars that have created, um, you know, a significant, um, you know, development in this community. So yeah. appreciate that. <clears throat> and I'm glad you mentioned that it's gap finance because obviously without primary lenders, our programs wouldn't be possible either, so. And, um, Thank you very much. Um, and you know, we, we're not with coronavirus and everything else coming. You know, I've I've had a couple businesses reach out to me that are smaller, asking, you know, like what happens if my revenue stream stops. So there may need to be conversations of how can we make sure that we're understanding enough of the ripple effects that may affect some of those more service focused industries and just being poised to kind of flex with them um, along the way. It doesn't, it doesn't mean things, it doesn't mean things stop, but it's how can we, how can we comfort your blow a little bit so that long term you're still successful and we don't lose you in our community. Absolutely. Well, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you guys. The Oshkosh Common Council is currently in a break. For a schedule of all Gov TV programming, visit our website at oshkoshmedia.org. This is Gov TV, 